Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to share with you my experiences traveling to New Zealand, the South Island, and um, what I saw, what I did, and some of the hikes I went on. And I'm one of those people that uh, research as much as I possibly can before I go overseas to make sure that I'm getting exactly um, what I want to see and that I'm making sure that I'm packing as much in as I can and yeah, writing down a huge list of all the things. So I've saved you all of that trouble and I'm going to just tell you all the awesome places um, that we went. So we uh, landed in Christchurch and we got a rental car. We used the company Go Rentals and that was the cheapest. I looked on a forum beforehand and you know, there's Hertz and Allianz and they were really expensive. Though Go Rentals was the cheapest by far. Um, a little bit more out of the way, it's not exactly at the airport when you land and it doesn't like kind of work out nicely, you sort of have to like um, go around the airport and find it in like this other little area and it was a little bit confusing but totally worth it because it was so cheap. Um, and we used that and we drove to our hotel which wasn't great, I'm going to put the name down below of the hotel we stayed in because I don't want anyone else to endure what we endured there because it was no window, we didn't get um, a heads up at all about the fact that it was going to be a windowless room um, which I thought would probably be illegal, like how can you have a hotel room without a window, I think that's like you can't have sunlight in a room, like, that's, that just seems really weird to me but anyway so it didn't have a window in it but that was okay, we only stayed two days in Christchurch and it was, it was actually a little bit sad, Christchurch, a lot of the infrastructure and buildings and stuff were a little bit, um, it was still, uh, I think, dealing with the earthquake that had happened, so um, a lot of them were abandoned and um, uh, it wasn't the most beautiful of all the places in New Zealand we went to. Um, but anyway, we only stayed two days there and we drove from Christchurch to a place called Akaroa, which is on the coast of... Um, the South Island and uh, we had a dolphin swim booked there and I was a little bit hesitant at first because like it's been my dream forever to swim with dolphins and I read up on this um, company called Black Cat Cruises and the company seemed really legit and you didn't feed the dolphins um, uh, profits go towards um, the sanctuary there so they have uh, heck the dolphins that they have there they're called Hector's dolphins they're endangered and it's the only place in the world where you can see these type of dolphins. They're tiny, they're about this big, full grown and they've got, instead of having like a normal, regular pointy dolphin fin, they've got like a kind of a black circular fin, it's like a Mickey Mouse fin, or Mickey Mouse ear, but like as a fin. And they don't, you can't really see any visible teeth, they're just like gummy and they're the most adorable dolphins, they're so cute and you can't touch their skin because they bruise really easily, their skin is super sensitive. Um, but they're the rarest dolphins, unfortunately they're endangered but yeah the profits go towards um, helping them and um, they're protected in Akaroa's harbour by um, marine mammal sanctuary there so it was really great to know that yeah they didn't endorse feeding the dolphins. The boat that you go on um, to go and see them is actually, it doesn't have any metal propellers so um, the dolphins can't get hurt swimming under them or anything like that, which is really cool. And uh, when we went out, they gave you wetsuits and uh, there was, I think, 12 people on the boat all together. And, um, and when you go out to them, you find a pod that look like, um, you don't like, you know, uh, aggressively go towards them and then everyone jumps in and tries to get a photo with them. It's kind of like you're hanging out in the boat for a while until you find a pod that kind of come up to you and they, they they indicate that they're playful and that they, they're they curious about the boat and you know um, so it wasn't you didn't force yourself upon the dolphins you know in their little environment you just waited for them to kind of come to you so at the time it was kind of like a little bit boring and you get a bit restless but then it's better off for the dolphins welfare and it was when we actually did get a playful pod and we jumped in it was the most incredible experience of my life like I was crying like it was just like in the bay with these beautiful little dolphins and they swim under you and around you and it was just so magical and that cruise um, that little boat that we went out on was called Black Cat Cruises um, so it was a really good company and um, a really really great experience um, so I highly highly recommend that in Akaroa and Akaroa is beautiful it was just like um, little seaside village it was so so incredible 
Um, but the mountains came when we went from the drive. So after that, we went back down to Christchurch and through to um, Lake Takapo and Lake Pukaki. And um, the feeling that you get when you start to see like the snow-capped mountains on the horizon, like when you're in the car, you've just got these open highways. It was just like, like you get so excited and just, um, well, I don't know, that's just me. Like, because the mountains are so big and you're really like in the wilderness. And we went to Norway four or five years ago. So we we were kind of used to the uh, awe-inspiring like mountains. But this was like, this was incredible. This is just as good as Norway, if not better than Norway. Um, and we went to a place called uh, Mount John University Observatory. Um, so you can see the stars there at night, but we didn't do that because basically you can just go and watch the stars anywhere. You don't really have to go to a proper observatory, unless you're really into that. Um, but we went there during the day and you saw the amazing Lake Pukaki and Lake Takapo um, from this beautiful mountain view. You can just drive up or there's like a small hike, but it's not like a hike hike. It's, um, you can just drive up. And then after that we drove to, um, we stayed in a little town called Omarama and we drove to uh, Mount Cook. The road to Mount Cook was like incredible, hands down, so beautiful. You've got these glacier mountains and yeah, like snow-capped mountains and the, the view of Mount Cook and the surrounding mountains was incredible. It was so beautiful. So we're driving to Hooker Valley Track, and Hooker Valley Track is a really popular track to do in New Zealand. Um, one of the like the best tracks apparently. And we were used to having you know like snow gear with us because whenever um, in in Norway when we were hiking and they said you know that there was snow, you were going to see glaciers or snow. We were like, well, better pack the waterproof jacket, waterproof pants, the hiking boots, and but seriously, we completely overpacked. The, the hike was one hour and you could just do it in like sandals because it was all like wooden, um, like little bridges and um, steps that had been paved out along the way that you could do. And you could easily do it with kids and um, like the elderly could do it. It was completely fine. And the views were incredible. Like the views from the beginning and the views from the end. The end view was just like, just this glacier lake mountains and then just um, like actual uh, icebergs just floating in the um, glacier lake. It was so cool. Um, people were actually going out and swimming um, up to the icebergs and like taking photos on them but it was way too cold. So I didn't do that but yeah just Hooker Valley Track was a highlight. Definitely have to see Hooker Valley Track. Um, and after that so we stayed two nights in Omarama and then not much vegan food in Omarama there was there wasn't even like Asian food places where you could go get like vegetable stir fry it was literally um, I think there was just the buffet downstairs and it was really expensive and the only thing that they had was like I think vegetables uh, like steamed veggies and rice so we kind of just lived on two minute noodles while we were down there so after Omarama we drove to Wanaka which is like a town just before Queenstown and Wanaka was so beautiful it was like it's just on this massive lake Lake Wanaka and you've got the snow-capped mountain views you've got you're surrounded by nature it's it's a very picturesque quaint little town um, very clean very tidy um, quite small but at the same time pretty developed like lots of re little restaurants and cafes lots of vegan options as well in Wanaka um, and it's also a place um, where you can do lots of hiking. So we went to Roy's Peak, which was um, Roy's Peak Track, which is a hike that we did. Um, and you can do it in winter or summer. In winter, obviously, there's lots of snow, so that's an obstacle. But then in summer, it's also really, really hot and dry. And the day we did it was 35 degrees. We woke up super early to try and get a lot of the heat out of the way so we could do it in the morning. But it was still uh, incredibly hot. We packed three litres of water. It still wasn't enough. Um, the entire hike is uphill. You don't get any like flat bits. It's all an incline. Um, yeah, for about three hours, it's just an incline. And you're just like, oh my God, when is this going to be over? And then you finally get to the, the viewing point. Um, but even if you don't make it all the way up to the summit, um, you know, an hour in versus another hour in, you, you're always surrounded by an incredible like 360 view. So um, you don't really have to do the summit if you don't want to, but 
we can't, we were kind of just like, no, not giving up. We have to make it to the summit, even though we're all pretty much dying. And it's really cute. There's all these sheep along the way. There's sheep everywhere in New Zealand. Like every hike you go on, there's just like a lamb that might come around. And if you go to New Zealand in November, like what we did, um, there's something called lambing, which I think is where they have baby lambs. I assume. Um, so lambing is um, sometimes the trucks are closed if they they're doing lambing. So you have to check for that. I think it was the first till the 10th of November. Roy's Peak truck was closed for lambing. But um, if you go straight after that, you see all these little baby lambs everywhere. So that was really adorable. And then yes, yeah, so we made it to the summit. The views were incredible. Um, really, really amazing. Like. Um, you saw like, it was like fjords, well, they were fjords, you saw fjords and then you saw like um, mountain ranges in between that and incredible. So Roy's Peak Truck was amazing and then from Wanaka we drove to, oh another place in Wanaka to go to is the Blue Pools. So it's, um, we're just, it's I think it's an hour drive, an hour and a half drive out of Wanaka and you just um, go through nature and you see these beautiful glacial pools and it's crystal clear water and the reason why the water is so blue is due to the glaciers melting and then um, some of the sediment in the water and altogether it makes like this like turquoise blue transparent magical water so yeah that was incredible have to see that as well so then we drove to Queenstown and Queenstown was huge like compared to all the other little towns we'd stayed in it was really busy really touristy um, beautiful, you're surrounded by the Remarkables, which is this mountain range um, that was in Lord of the Rings. Um, lots of Queenstown's nature and mountain ranges were in Lord of the Rings. And we did it actually, we did a tour, the Lord of the Rings tour, um, which I highly recommend as well. Um, and you went to, so some of the places they filmed Lord of the Rings, um, so one of the main hills there in Queenstown you also saw you went to Galadria's forest and you also went to where Isengard was filmed and um, there was like a chance to cosplay and like dress up and they gave you like a sword and the replica and we got to like sword fight in the, um, the forest which was really cool so it was a really fun day out doing that and then what else did we do? Oh the bungee jump so the bungee jump was the AJ Hackett 43 meter bungee in the um, Kawarau Kawaru? I don't know how to pronounce that, in the, the river. Um, you didn't bungee jump in the river, although you could if you wanted to, you could get dunked in the water. But I wasn't going to do that. Um, and that was uh, incredible. I thought I was, I thought I wasn't going to be able to do it, but like the adrenaline kicks in and then you kind of can't even see like what's around you and you just jump and it's, it's all good. Um, but that was amazing. But then after it, after the, you've done the 43 meter one, I found out that there was much, much bigger ones you could do. So next time I go to Queenstown, I'm definitely going to be doing the, um, the bigger bungee jumps. Um, after we'd done the bungee jump, then we, um, I unfortunately broke my toe. So I wasn't doing any extreme activities or hiking or anything like that. I just literally walked into the couch, I was just packing up my um, suitcase and walked into it and just broke it. So that was really disappointing because we still had a whole four or five days left in um, in New Zealand and there were lots of hikes that I wanted to do around Milford Sound but unfortunately I couldn't do those. So instead we just did the um, Milford Sound cruise and to drive to Milford Sound um, from Queenstown was actually quite a long time. It was about three hours, maybe even more. So we stayed in Tianao, which is a little town uh, just before Milford Sound. And Tianao actually had a really great Indian place to go that had um, vegan food and lots of vegan options. So that's, um, I'll leave the name of it down here. But that was really great. And so yeah, I was on crutches, which sucks. <laughs> so I was on the cruise. Um, the Milford Sound cruise though was incredible. Like that's a definite must see. Milford Sound was so beautiful to drive through to Milford Sound, um, like the mountains just got, like you got really, really close to them, you went under a tunnel and um, it was just, it was surreal to be surrounded by mountains that high and just um, like, just towering above you was kind of creepy but um, also amazing and the scenery was breathtaking. So the scenery just got better and better and better the further down south you went I feel. Um, and then after the Milford Sound cruise, yeah, we didn't do any of the hikes, unfortunately, so I can't report on any of those. But 
We ended up um, going back to Wanaka for the last few days. We stayed in sort of like an Airbnb type hotel. It was still a hotel, but we had like kitchen facilities so we could cook our own food. Um, and we just explored Wanaka a little bit more. Um, not that much because I was on crutches. But yeah, we just hung by the lake. The lake is so beautiful. You can drink all the water in the lake as well, like all the lakes. It's just like crystal clear glacial water. It's it's so beautiful. And oh yeah, we did kayaking one of the days. And then there's a little island that you can kayak from in Lake Wanaka to Ruby Island. And then you've got like the little island to yourself and it's really beautiful. But yeah, um, that's pretty much what we did in New Zealand. And um, we didn't get to see Hobbiton because um, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. That's why we did the Lord of the Rings tour and I wanted to see all of the landscapes as well. Um, but uh, Hobbiton's up north, so you won't be able to see that in the south. Um, what else didn't we get to see? We didn't get to see a kiwi, um, one the little birds, but if you went to Queenstown Zoo, they had kiwis there, but I didn't want to go to a zoo. Um, and yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. It was an incredible trip and the, some of the best scenery I've ever seen in my life. Um, and not too expensive, pretty much the same as Australian prices for a lot of the stuff. Um, and as for the food, uh, there was some places in Wanaka that you could eat vegan, like I said, that were pretty good. But next time I would just um, stay Airbnbs if I could do it again. Just try and book early because um, a lot of the places were no vacancy, like booked out. Um, so sometimes we had to stay in places that were a little bit more expensive, even though we did book a lot of the accommodation beforehand. And because um, November is a really, really popular time to visit New Zealand because it's warm and also all the beautiful, they've got these purple mountain flowers that come out in November and it just like adds to the scenery. Um, and yeah, other than that, it was an incredible trip and I hope this has helped you with maybe planning if you're going to go to New Zealand. Um, I'm definitely going to go back. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and I hope you have a wonderful day.